Well, hi there. It's Christmas. Look at all this stuff that we just got from Josh's frogs. I, I am so excited. We are going to build the rockinest dart frog enclosure, at least that I've ever made. So I'm pretty excited about this. Let's take a look at all of the things they've sent us. First off, this enclosure, this is a 18 by 18 by 24 exoterra enclosure with hood. They've included some bodacious LED grow lights. So I'm super excited to give those a try. We've got all kinds of cool leaves and moss and substrate and hydro balls. We've got cork bark and we've got all kinds of awesome wood. We've got expanding foam. Then we've got all of our stuff for our fruit fly colonies so we can keep our frogs alive. This is a really great day. Let's get to work. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is do our backdrop. And I'm actually gonna try a technique I've never tried before and I've never seen tried before, but it's gonna be kind of a hybrid between the backdrop from our paludarium and the backdrop we used in our very first video. So I'm gonna use expanding foam to do most of the backdrop because I wanna give it some 3D elements and places for the frogs to climb. Dart frogs aren't great climbers. If I'm gonna be able to use this, this height to this enclosure, it's because I'm gonna build them some places where they can climb and they're gonna need ramps to get there. We're gonna enjoy using our expanding foam. But then instead of doing the silicone on top, I'm gonna do our Gorilla Glue and Substrate backdrop and I'm just gonna see how that works out. I think it's gonna be awesome and I'll let you know. So let's get this enclosure on its back. Let's get this styrofoam backdrop out. Let's get to work. So I'm just taking a look at what we have to play with here. We've got Malaysian driftwood and we've got manzanita and we've got cork bark and we've got spray foam. And with that, we're gonna build up a big backdrop on which these guys can climb. Oh, look at this guy. That's pretty darn cool. I think that might sit on the ground. Oh yeah, that'll be awesome. Let's see here. So I think I've got something I kind of like here. I've, I've kind of made it so that the wood comes out from the backdrop and I've got it so it's propped away in such a way that I can use the wood to hold some of the plants that we're gonna put in here later on. And hopefully this will all give a lot more surface area on which the frogs can climb. Though I actually do wanna do one more little experiment. So I took some pictures of what I did here now I'm gonna try a total rearrangement. I think I might even be happier with this idea. All right, so I have decided what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do multiple levels using the cork as an area that I can fill with sub substrate and I can put plants in there so they can be raining down from up above. I think it's gonna be really cool and I'm gonna use the expanding foam to hold these in place. Okay, before using expanding foam, shake it for 60 seconds. All right, ready, set, go. Oh, while I'm doing this, I should point out that this exoterra lid has the same flaw that all exoterra lids have. And so I will be filling that gap with expanding foam while I have this out in case I ever add some of the animals that can cohabitate well with dart frogs like morning geckos to this enclosure. So first things first, fill in that gap.
All right, so we've given our expanding foam some time to cure. Now it's time to get carving. And the first thing I'm gonna do is finish fixing the Exoterra design flaw, which is their super escape portal for any small animals. Awesome. Okay, now I'm gonna get carving on my expanding foam and I'm gonna try using a Dremel. I do have a knife if the Dremel doesn't work out, but we'll give it a shot. I think the one thing that you're gonna wanna be really careful about if you do choose to use a Dremel is that you never, ever, ever let it touch the glass because it could easily break your glass. So I'm gonna use this for some quick carving and then I might do some of my fine work with a knife. We'll see how this goes. I think after trying that, I'm gonna use the knife more than the Dremel. Okay, a couple things I've learned. Thing number one, Dremel, probably not the way to go with expanding foam. Knife actually still works really, really well. I'm probably actually going to be doing more stuff with expanding foam because I've been working on some desert rock and I intend to show that to you guys in the relatively near future. But uh, expanding foam, knife's the way to go. Second thing, if you're gonna do really, really deep expanding foam, you've gotta realize that some of it well, it might not cure, at least not as quickly as normal, which is to be expected. But I, I ran into essentially some Gorilla Glue in the middle of this, and that's fine because I'm about to cover it with Gorilla Glue anyway, but something to be aware of. Let's, uh, let's clean this up a little bit and start mixing up our substrates. And then I think it's gonna be time to try our real experiment because I have never put Gorilla Glue on expanding foam. And if this experiment works, I'm probably going to be putting a lot of Gorilla Glue on expanding foam from now on. Next step, I'm going to make some substrate to use on the backdrop. And I'm gonna need quite a bit of it because I need to bury all of that stuff that I just made out of expanding foam entirely in the substrate. So, fortunately, I've got this huge bag of Cocoa Cradle that Josh's Frog sent to us and I've got some of the riverbed sand that Josh's Frogs sent to us for our last enclosure build, which was our paludarium that we built for the Starry Night Reed Frogs. So I'm gonna add a little of that and some sphagnum moss. It's gonna be awesome. If you've watched us use Gorilla Glue before, well, first thing, tuck your tie. Always tuck your tie. Second thing is you'll know that it is water activated. And so I'm gonna get our substrate a little bit wet and I'm gonna get the backdrop on our enclosure a little bit wet. And then I'm gonna put the Gorilla Glue in like a layer of honey. I just kind of want a thin layer. The thing I'm gonna be experimenting with this time is putting Gorilla Glue on top of expanding foam the expanding foam is porous, so what I'm sort of hoping doesn't happen too much is I'm hoping not too much of it is absorbed right into it before I can get substrate on top of it. I, what I think I will do is I'm gonna put the Gorilla Glue on the entire rest of the back of the enclosure before I put it on the actual expanding foam and I'll put that on last. That is where our experiment could fail.
All right, I think we've got a pretty good layer of honey on there. Let's start throwing on some substrate. All right, I'm putting the lid on now just to hold the substrate in a little better. Now that I'm to the top. All right, so right now I'm just pushing down. The Gorilla Glue is gonna expand because it basically is the same stuff as the expanding foam, just not aerosolized. And so it's gonna keep rising up. And because I don't want it to just consume all of my enclosure, I'm pushing it down regularly. If you want it to fill up more of your background, just let it rise up. All right, I think we've given that enough time. That was a lot of pushing, probably because I put such a thick layer of Gorilla Glue on there. It inflated itself for a while, but I kind of stretched it a little bit. It seems like it's pretty hard and I'm, I just want to see what this looks like. So, moment of truth has arrived. It's pretty hard back there. This is the moment of real truth right here. I think that actually turned out pretty cool. All right, guys, so the moment of truth has arrived. We can see the backdrop and it looks awesome. It looks awesome. The Gorilla Glue stuck to the expanding foam really, really well, and it looks phenomenal, phenomenal. I cannot imagine how cool this is gonna look once we get all the plants in there, once we get the other sticks and things, but we have got some really cool shelves there on the backdrop and I am super excited about this. Holy moly, it's awesome! All right, let's get that dirt out of there. All right, backdrop is looking awesome. Let's get that false bottom in there. For this part of our build, Josh's Frogs has provided us with 10 quarts of their false bottom. And something I really like about it is right on the label, it tells us what order we should use things. So you do the false bottom first, then the substrate barrier, then the ABG, then some sphagnum moss, and then the leaf litter. So fortunately we did save quite a bit of our sphagnum moss for that level. Let's put this false bottom in. We'll go with the whole 10 quarts, why not? All right, so this is the substrate barrier. And it looks like it's not cut to size exactly because this is an 18 by 24. So we're gonna cut off six inches or we could just fold it. I think we'll just fold it. This is the ABG, which I really, really like. It just has a whole lot of cool stuff. One of my favorite things is it has charcoal right in it. So you don't need to put activated carbon in there or anything. You just mix everything up in this bag, put it in there. All right, let's mix up some ABG. I really like this stuff. I've been essentially making this myself for a long time. Josh's Frogs just put it all in one bag for you. Mix up the second bag of ABG. And especially because this has the charcoal in it, I'm actually gonna put a little of this ABG in each one of my levels that I have on the back. Because I've actually added in quite a bit of additional surface area to my enclosure, I'm gonna add a little bit of the substrate that we use for the back 
just to give us a little more depth in here and to give us a place so that we can plant some plants right in our backdrop and down here. All right, moss time. And I've got this cool sheet moss as well. Ooh, it's really cool. It's really cool sheet moss. Now we've got buckets of live oak leaves, which are actually really, really great for dart frog enclosures. They can walk on top of them. They don't get kind of as, I don't know, they don't sink into the substrate. Dart frogs have little toes and they live on the forest floor in the rainforest. And so it is all leaf litter all the time. This is a great, great thing to cover your substrate. They gave us three huge bags. Things are starting to look really cool, but I gotta play around with some of this wood. I gotta build some little ramps for the frogs. Still got a lot of fun to have in here. All right. I think that looks pretty darn rad. Now we just need to get some plants in there. It is a new day. Since we last worked on this enclosure, I added just a little bit of live moss in a couple of spots and I added a little water bowl. But today I have a lot of exciting stuff from Josh's frogs. First of all, we've got our plants. We've also got our springtails and our isopods. So we're gonna be able to make this officially bioactive and our frogs are here. So we're gonna introduce those here in just a minute. But first, to work on the placement of these plants. I've got a few different ones that I'm pretty excited about. I've got these, these are red stem tears, and they are a plant that will cascade down. So I'm probably gonna put them on one of my high shelves so they can cascade down over time. Another cascading plant that I have is this cypress spike moss, which again, I'm gonna put up high and let it cascade down. I really think this is gorgeous. Uh, this definitely, promotes the feel of like tropical paradise. And that's what we're building on a small scale. Okay, this is a peperomia. We discussed these actually on our video of five of the best plants for, for vivaria. And I, I love this thing. I've actually got it in the enclosure that's back there. They grow great. And they'll even actually, if you just break off one leaf, you'll grow a whole new plant, which is spectacular. It looks so cool, so beautiful. That's one that's not really gonna cascade down or creep up. So I'm just gonna plant it somewhere down in the bottom probably. This is a white rabbit's foot fern. And this awesome plant is another one that I'm gonna plant basically anywhere I want to. It can grow as an epiphyte, which means uh, that it can grow sort of like a bromeliad right off the side of a tree or something. So I could plant it up high or we could plant it down low. I'm just gonna play that one by ear a little bit. And last, I have this Panama ficus, which this is a creeping plant, so this one's gonna go up. So I'm gonna plant this somewhere fairly low so it can creep up, up the backdrop and stuff. This is probably gonna turn out really, really cool. All of this stuff also comes to us from Josh's Frogs. And again, we've got links to all of these things down in the description. So if you wanna get any of this stuff, Josh's Frogs has everything you could need for an enclosure built like this. So go ahead and check it out and use our discount code. Save yourself some money. All right, let's get to it. One thing I really like about the way that Josh's Frogs sends their plants, and maybe this is common for people shipping plants, but they always put tape in such a way that it holds all the substrate in because otherwise the whole plant could fall out during shipping. And, and they package them really, really well. They put them also in their own little uh, kind of paper envelopes. They're, they're very, very well packaged and the plants always come looking perfect.
So for the most part, I followed my plan. I put the red stem tears up top and the cypress spike moss in a position where they could both cascade down, but I moved the peperomia up. I've seen from the way that they grow in my other tank that off of a ledge, I mean, they're growing basically off of the backdrop in my other enclosure and they come out and just, these beautiful, beautiful shapes, they'll, they'll rise up towards the light. And so I think from that position there, it's gonna get plenty of light and yet we're gonna see it do some really, really cool stuff. It'll be an amazing focal point in this enclosure. Then I've got my, my ficus right where I expected to put it and my fern pretty much right where I intended for it to be. But I've left this front portion a lot more open than I orig originally envisioned. And I'm actually pretty excited to see what this is gonna look like when we get it all put together. Now I'm just gonna put in my, my isopods and my springtails so it's truly bioactive. Then it'll be time to put our frogs in. I see some springtails in there. Good luck guys, don't get eaten by frogs. I got ahead of myself, I'm very excited about these. These are Dendrobatus tinctorius, which is actually one of the best pet frogs you could possibly get, at least as far as dart frogs go. And these particular ones are powder blue, which are a little less common and extremely gorgeous. I'm very excited to show them to you, but I remembered I've actually got to get the top and the lights on this thing before it's going to be totally ready for frogs. So let's not forget to do that. Now here, I'm in a very dry climate. To keep the humidity where you're going to need it for dart frogs, we are going to put glass in the top in place of the screen top. I've been trying to make a decision if I want to do the screen top with glass on top of it or just put the glass panel in. I think we'll be okay with just the glass panel. When I put the lights on top, we'll, we'll verify if, if that's all gonna work. But I think that'll work out just dandy. The lights that they sent us are really, really cool as well. So I'm actually not gonna use this. I am gonna use this and these. These are Josh's Frog's LED grow lights. So dart frogs, they don't really need any sort of, of lighting really at all other than for basic photo period but the plants do. And so these are gonna produce a lot of light for the plants without producing a lot of heat because dart frogs don't need it very warm. In fact, too much heat can kill them. And so I'm gonna put this hood together. We'll put the glass on the top and then we'll see what it all looks like all lit up. Handy dandy skeletal. Josh's frog sent this piece of glass as well. So they literally have everything that you would need for an unbelievably amazing and perfect dart frog bioactive vivarium. And I'm just so excited that we're getting to show you some of the things that they have available. You should definitely check them out. We've got a link down in the description that'll save you some money with Josh's frogs. I mean, if you want to build a tank like this, this is a one-stop shop. Glasses in place. This hood, the 18 inch hood from Exoterra has a spot for two bulbs there in the center. And so they sent us Two of their lights. Oh, it's got lots of fins for cooling so it doesn't overheat. This is a really cool bowl. It is directional though, so you'll have to get it screwed in pointing the right direction. That made a big difference. All right, before I put the frogs in, I'm gonna go ahead and mist very, very heavily so nothing's too dry. It's been a few days since we did the backdrop, everything's dried out a bit. And to give the, the plants a little head start, then it's gonna be frog time. As these frogs can absorb chemicals through their skin, make sure you're using water that is, um, doesn't have chlorine, it's been treated. Josh's frogs, unsurprisingly, has all sorts of water treatment for frogs as well. All right, so we've got two males and one female. Powder blue dying dark frogs.
I think that turned out beautifully. I think it's going to grow in really, really nicely. And these frogs are amazing. If you haven't seen our video on dying dart frogs, tinks, you can check that out right there. Definitely go check out Josh's frogs. We, we are so thankful to them for sponsoring this video, for sponsoring this enclosure build, and we could not stand by a company more highly. They're wonderful. If you like dart frogs or really any other kinds of frogs or other small, beautiful pets like neon day geckos that we've covered in the past, you're going to want to check out Josh's frogs. If you want to save some money, be sure to use our link that's down in the description. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Chilean. Chilean. Sorry, no more. Claro, po. Only the Chileans will get that.